Finally, the very vexed question. Uh, how to greet a stranger? A chilly handshake? Uh, or uh, do you risk giving offence with perhaps a kiss on the cheek or even both cheeks? The Telegraph reports that the biggest study ever conducted into physical contact has been used to create a map showing where the touchable areas of the body are for particular relationships uh, and which areas are off limits. The research at Oxford University suggests most people harbour an underlying reluctance to being touched by a stranger anywhere but on their hands. Uh, the Telegraph welcomes the findings in its view amid promiscuous pecking and the curse of the moi-moi kiss. It's a comfort to know that caution is the wisest way in social intercourse. David Davis just touched Giles Fraser on the head there, I should say. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't think... He, I didn't give him a kiss. I don't think he, <laughs> no, it, it looked very affectionate. Anyway, um, you'll gather at a quarter to eight that we're turning to the defeat uh, of the government and the Lords and the tax credit changes and great anger among ministers about being frustrated by the unelected upper house. Great talk of democracy being undermined. We'll hear from the leader of the Commons in charge of the government's business there, Chris Grayling, in half an hour. But what do the dissident Conservatives say? As I indicated, David Davis, um, very senior backbencher, of course, who's been one of the critics, joins us in the studio. Um, it's beyond argument that the Lords did defy a convention here that's been you know, pretty well in place for 100 years and uh, it decided that this was worth it do you think it was? Well, the first thing is it's not beyond argument. I mean, the uh, clerk of the Parliament, the most senior authority on this, said it wasn't. Um, the uh, Joint Committee on the Convention said it wasn't uh, some years ago. Uh, and the head of the Constitution Unit said it wasn't. So um, uh, the, the, let, let's put that to one side. Yes, it was worth it. I mean, whatever whatever your judgment on the Convention, uh, and I think the, there's been a lot of constitutional barrack room lawyers around in the, mm. the last few days, um, uh, the, the, the simple truth is that this was an incredibly important, uh, uh, possibly harmful thing to three million people, thereabouts, hard-working families that people were supposed to support and somebody had to tell the government to think again. And do you believe that George Osborne will now come up with something which delivers him savings but does it, and it was Nigel Lawson's point in the Lords last night, does it without the weight falling disproportionately on those who are at the bottom of the scale? Uh, well, yes. I mean, you're, you're right. Uh, uh, Nigel Lawson, probably the greatest uh, Chancellor of Modern Times said this has to be spread more widely, but that won't just that won't solve the problem of it. That won't go far enough in your It opinion. won't. I don't I think. I mean, he proposed that. Uh, my co-signatory in the Commons motion also proposed something similar, Frank Field. Uh, but the simple problem is that the people at the bottom of the, uh, of the pile can't afford anything, frankly. Uh, and so uh, we have to do two things, really. One, we have to uh, mitigate it across the incomes. But the other thing I think we have to do is to slow it down, because. What's George Osborne's aim? He, his aim is to get to a fiscal balance by 2020. That's what matters. Mm. That's what the financial markets are looking at. And what tra trajectory is to get there, in a way, doesn't matter, as long as it's clear. Uh, and so we have to do but you think there are ways of doing it using time and different ways of tweaking the tax system, which would produce the same result without what you consider to be the unfairness of this. That's right. But there's one more thing other than just the, the straight unfairness. Yesterday, two more reports came out, one one from a, a set of uh, uh, advisers on this, a set of consultants, and the other from the IFS and the Resolution Foundation in front of the Commons Committee. And what they said was it wasn't just unfair in terms of the way it fell, it also made the, the, what they call a marginal withdrawal rate, 93%. In other words, if you're a very poor person earning at the minimum wage, you work a couple of extra hours, you only keep 7p in the pound. Well, that's bonkers. That's the, that's the opposite of what we're trying to do. So we need to fix that too. Let me turn to the other point with which we began, really, and that is the place of the law. I thought you were going to be stroking uh, your... No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> um, now, it's, it's clear the Prime Minister's announced some kind of review, yeah. and there's been some fairly blood-curdling stuff. Yeah. Um, talked about the Lords, and, and, you know, the papers are weighing in, the Telegraph and the Times are both saying, despite what you say about the clerk to the Parliament, yeah. uh, that this is unconstitutional. What would the reaction be in your party if the government tried to either uh, put down some new rules and regulations that were binding on the unelected House or threaten to create 
you know, 100 Tory peers in order to get a majority. Well, let's deal with 100 Tory peers first. I mean, yes. that's a ridiculous threat. I mean, the the last uh, the last honours list came under wide criticism, mm. uh, and that was just a few because of the quality of because the of the quality of peers. How are you going to get higher quality people when you're going into hundreds? It's ridiculous. And what what do you think the public effect would be if that were the tactic well, the public that was will chosen? Be disgusted by it. I mean, they, they will they will they will view that action as a piece of sort of bullying politics, frankly. Well, the other. The other possibility is that some kind of uh, convention is enshrined in, you know, on a piece of paper yeah. uh, that says, look, um, after the Lloyd George row, which of course was the other way around. Yes, which it was is the, the other way around, this, exactly. The, the whole thing about the people's yeah. budget. But um, after all that, and the various times when this has been tested, including votes and statutory instruments, as this was last night, the government may say, let's codify this. Let's make it clear what the limit of the Lord's role is. And on financial measures, it's, they can't even hold things up. They have to let them through if the elected government wins in the elected house. What would you say to that? Well, if I were in the Lords, I would respond to that with a counter-proposal. I mean, this is the government, remember, that took through a constitutional bill, the Data Retention of Escalatory Powers yes. uh, Act, in one day through the Commons. So its adherence to conventions is not exactly um, stellar. And, of course, it's a very important point that the Lords, as part of the process, would have to approve any such thing That's if right. it was a change to... And their, argu order. their argument, put the convention to one side, their practical argument yesterday was that the Commons wasn't given a proper opportunity to review this because it was a statutory instrument. It was a yes-no. Yes. We couldn't reform it. If it had gone through as a part of a bill, or as a bill, it would have been capable of being modified on the way through. David Davis, thank you very much. It is 11 minutes to 8. Time